So, apologize, this video is going to be all over the place. <laughs> I was uh, sick yesterday, I still am. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. Hopefully I won't get into a coughing fit. I was praying to God I didn't have uh, the the um, the jab uh, disease again. Uh, what do they call it? Mount Rona. I, I, thank God I didn't have Rona again. I thought maybe it was because it was all in my chest. And the last time I had it, back in January 2020, I... I just I sat up and coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed. Anyway, anyway, this is Jason Hinkle on um, Rumble. I, I love listening to him. Uh, boy, I tell you what, I don't know how in the world he gets all his news, uh, but boy, he, he goes around the horn. So many great people, independent reporters that uh, exist on Rumble now. And of course, I watched uh, Glenn Greenwald. He had a great video on. He was talking about the importance of the uh, Twitter files and how the media narrative is trying to spin that as a nothing burger, but that it's probably the most significant uh, thing since the, uh, what were the papers back in 73 uh, when uh, Nixon got impeached, you know? So problem is we're much, much more corrupt now, I think, than we were back then. So we'll see where it goes. Of course, you know that uh, nothing happened with the election today. Uh, Although it was interesting when Gates uh, nominated Trump. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was speculation a long time back. People were going, wouldn't it be great if somebody nominated Trump for Speaker of the House? Well, they did it. Uh, Gates did it. I'm sure it'll go n nowhere, but I mean, but I, I, hell, you never know. I mean, I don't, I don't think um, McCarthy's going to get it. Uh, and there's arguments on both sides, but I, 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 like, I like the stance they're taking. It's a good, healthy debate. I think it's one that we need. But anyway, let's listen, listen to this. This is a story that wouldn't be on your radar. And I, I thought, you know what? This guy, how does he find this stuff? Listen to this. Biden's little visit to the U.S. Virgin Islands, Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands, <clears throat> who filed said lawsuit that uh, was brought against J.P. Morgan for aiding Epstein in his international child, child sex trafficking ring, has now lost her job. So in other words, uh, we were wondering why Biden was vacationing in the Virgin Islands, and uh, the speculation is, is just like the uh, when he fired the uh, Russian prosecutor for investigating Hunter Biden, that, uh, that he went down there and got this attorney general fired for J.P. Morgan because uh, they were investigating connections to uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein, I guess that's, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Epstein, Epstein, anyway. Days after suing J.P. Morgan Chase in connection with the Jeffrey Epstein probe. All right, he said Epstein, so maybe, maybe that's right. These There's so much insanity in the world today. I mean, look at what's going on right now. Andrew Tate, right? You got the world, you got the social media canceled beyond belief. You got people calling for his execution based upon seeing no evidence. Yeah, I, anyway, that's, uh, he's getting into the Andrew Tate story. I, I, I'm not real interested in that, but it is terrible. I mean, the guy, uh, he basically has been a good advocate for younger people. Um, I wanted to get in, uh, you know, boy, I tell you, like I said, we're going to bounce around everywhere on this video. Um, first thing was uh, I was looking into um, things to help uh, with my uh, um, neuropathy. And I found this guy on, uh, on YouTube and I was like, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to try some of this stuff. And uh, of course, we know, you know, don't don't do sugar. And of course, I didn't realize how much alcohol uh, can affect your um the uh, your neuropathy so I got to completely cut alcohol out of my diet god I am gonna miss my beer for a, at least for a while and, and hopefully I'll get some feeling back in my hands and feet after breaking my neck um, so you know definitely cut sugar out carbohydrate and then so what he was saying was you know we can counter I mean you can't cut everything out of your diet but you can counteract some of the stuff so I ordered some new supplements now you know with supplements I don't know of a good way to research those. Uh, I just go to Amazon and pick the one that has either the most people or is the Amazon choice in hopes that I'm, you're getting something because it's not regulated. Nobody ever tests them that I know of. I mean, if you know a good website that goes out and does independent testing on supplements, let me know. I, I don't know of any way to research these. I just got to take these companies at their word uh, that the, I'm getting what I think I'm getting. So the first one was uh, vitamin B1. I, I didn't have any vitamin B1 in the house. I had B12. Um, so I, I went ahead and ordered that, and then I'd never heard of this. Ben, Benfotianini. I'll just spell it for you. B-N-F-O-T-I-A-N-I. I think that's A-E. I can't even read. Any. Nine. 
the <laughs> phonine. Okay, so anyway, I that is actually a supplement that you can buy, and I bought that on Amazon. Now, I did not get this alpha lipoic acid. You know, you got to cut yourself off somewhere. <laughs> you know, uh, and well, they did say long walks. You know, I do a lot of hiking, so that's that's why I've I've been doing pretty good. Of course, we all know cinnamon's good for us, and then I uh, my. Uh, ex-wife left me a bunch of apple cider vinegar, but I didn't know how good that was for you. Yeah, well, I kind of did. You know, she had said, you know, definitely uh, do apple cider vinegar. I was like, well, okay, so I'm going to be doing uh, a good swift slug of that mixed with water uh, each day from now on for sure. I've been, been kind of doing it, but I, I got to make it a regular thing for sure. Um, then, of course, you know, milk thistle, we all knew that's good for the liver, or at least I hope you did. And, um, uh, and then, of course, potassium. Now, I, don't, I, I used to eat a lot of bananas, but, you know, I don't eat that many anymore. And so I went ahead and ordered a potassium supplement. And then he also mentioned, I didn't order this, but Z-E-L-I-R-I-V-M. Zelirium? I don't know. All right, so that's it for uh, uh, things or supplements that you may want to look into. If you got a good way to research them and figure out if they're for real or not, uh, definitely let me know. Um there was a great video by Mark Moss, because uh, you know me, I'm, I'm all over Wells Fargo because my uh, community is, is hanging out there by, the, by our, our doodads uh, with uh, you know millions of dollars in the bank at Wells Fargo, and I'm very frightened for that money. Uh, but uh, this was a statistic that he threw up, uh, or it might have been him, I don't know. If, but uh, 267 branch offices have closed within the last year for Wells Fargo. Now, that's not just true of Wells Fargo. That's in a lot of the big banks are closing a lot of shifts. Um, the, uh, the other, per, per, so the, by the way, we're going to get into the danger. And also in Mark Moss's video, he got into bail-ins versus bail-outs, uh, the, uh, the Dodd-Frank legislation. You might want to watch that video. I'll try to just kind of summarize it as best I can. Uh, I, a good thing that came out of the Twitter files, uh, you know, shifty shift. The Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. Uh, boy, I tell you, he was he was beaten on Twitter to, to ban anybody that said anything bad about him on Twitter. What a scumbag, huh? I mean, that guy is just the scum of the earth. My God. All right, so the first thing that Mark Moss was pointing out is that banks can do a bail-in. Uh, and so what that means is anything you have in the bank over 250000 they can bail it in. But it gets... A lot worse than that. I'm going to get get into it. You know that the money that you put in a bank is not yours. That's the bank's money. Okay, by law, that's their money. It's not your money. So don't expect to get your money back out. Now, one of the things that I knew about, but I haven't really reported on it very much, is that uh, right now the banks have nine trillion in derivative liabilities. But I, uh, well, no, FDIC. Excuse me. There's nine trillion in liabilities at the banks. I'm sorry for for people's deposits, but the FDIC only has 125 billion. So if everybody made a run on the banks tomorrow, only uh, 125 billion would be paid out to investors. So that was very interesting. I, I I didn't know the exact numbers. I was glad to get that from him. Uh, the other thing that he was showing was uh, there was a. Um, a uh, Federal Reserve meeting that got caught on tape, I want to say back in November or so. And uh, they were talking about how, you know, they were going to have to do bail-ins and that uh, they didn't want to panic the public. So they said that only professionals really need to know how dire the situation is. And you can watch his video if you want to get more information. You know, I've talked about secured versus unsecured. Uh, by the way, um, another thing that he pointed out that I thought was interesting, and I knew this, well, I guess I kind of knew it, but it's sometimes you got to beat it into your head two or three times. Is you know that if you've got two hundred thousand in a savings account and two hundred thousand in a checking account, and the bank is FDIC for two hundred and fifty thousand, you're only insured for two hundred fifty thousand. You're not insured per account. It's per uh, bank or credit credit union or whatever. All right. So so that's. One big reason to have multiple banking institutions. Not only that, you don't want to have your money in one spot, all you know, all at a risk with one banking institution. You never know. I mean, regional banks have gone out of business. I haven't heard of too many. I think there might have been a credit union in California that went out of business. Uh, rarely do I hear about credit unions, but <clears throat> we have certainly heard about um, 
banks and regional banks. <clears throat> and also he was pointing out that the uh, too big to fail, that's supposed to not be possible anymore. That, uh, that this time around, they're not going to bail them out with taxpayer money. They're just going to bail them out with your deposits. So take of that what you will. The other thing was, uh, of course, getting your money out of the banks. You know, are you invested in assets? You know, do you own some cows, chickens, uh, some farmland, uh, or precious metals, whatever? So one of the things I did today, and uh, it's because, I, boy, I tell you, this good marketing. I mean, this is marketing by uh, Esty Bullion. And so they sent me this. I'm going to get right up next to the camera here. Check that out. Isn't that cool? So I got this, you know, it's a one ounce, this is a one ounce copper coin. And I was like, well, why in the world would you ever want to own a copper coin, you know? It's not considered legal bullion, and I always like to have legal bullion. Um, but uh, I got to thinking about it, and I said, well, wait a minute. Uh, SD Bullion right now, they're offering uh, copper rounds, one ounce copper rounds, their choice of, of what you get. Uh, for a dollar thirty nine, and when I fished around, I found another place that had them for a dollar fifty, and another place had them for dollar ninety nine. So that's a pretty doggone good price. But, but then I said, well, wonder how much copper is. Uh, you know, if you were to buy it just in bulk, like a, like per pound, it's well from one website, and I don't know for sure if this is true. They said that it's three hundred and uh, three dollars and eighty two cents per pound, but I didn't see any place that you could go and order a pound of copper. You know, I, maybe you can, I mean, you can get like copper bars and stuff, you know, uh, and that, that works out to be 47 cents per ounce, or um, 24 cents per ounce, if you, if you think about that, for 382 per pound. So are the rounds that good a deal? Yes and no. I, I went ahead and ordered a whole bunch of them, and uh, just because, okay, let's say that the uh, SHIT, you know, or uh, not SHIT, the sh you know what I'm trying to say. The stuff hits the fan, okay? And uh, so what what are you going to do? What are you going to do? If you're gonna, are you going to buy, you know, use your one-ounce silver coins to go out and barter with people? Well, yeah, but, you know, that's a that's could be a high-dollar item, you know, uh, assuming that the dollar is devalued quite a bit. So, you know, you, you, you want to just buy, let's say, a tomato, right? Are you going to be able to, to, I mean, so what are you going to do? Buy a whole bushel of tomatoes with one silver coin, right? Hell, it might buy you uh, two bushels of tomatoes, three, who knows? So you could barter with these silver, these copper coins. And I was thinking, that because, uh, you know, buck 39, you know, copper, I'm sure it's going to be, all commodities are going up. And I thought, well, this would be a good barter tool, I think, uh, to be able to buy stuff with. Um let me know what you think. In the, in the, so I bought, like I said, I bought a whole bunch of them. And, and that way, you know, if I got to get out and barter with uh, some copper coins. Plus, I think they look cool. You know, uh, once, you know, many years ago, silver was only worth $4 an ounce hmm? in my lifetime. So now it's uh, 20, it's $26. Well, like I got the price right here. What, what did I write down? Oh, it's at 20, 23.50 is what it was today. So, um, all right, that's that's about it for for that page. Let's see. All right, did I cover everything on here? This was Wells Fargo with the bail-ins. So now we'll get on to um, oh, yeah, and the bail-ins. This was another statistic that he gave was uh, so in Cyprus, for example, when the bank went under there, uh, people who had one hundred thousand dollars in the bank only got forty-seven percent of that money back. Uh, and that was like a year, a year and a half later. So, uh, you know, you, you risk your money how you want. So that was, that's what, that's a good exam. And, and Europe has basically the same laws that we have. So if we do have a, uh, something happen. So the, the latest on Ukraine, and this is from Alex Christophus. I, I'm going to, I'm going to spell his last name. You can find him on YouTube and uh, Rumble. C-H-R-I-S-T-O-F-O-R-O-V. And I'm just going to real summarize real quick uh, a couple of his videos. Um, where it uh, looks like um, France is going to be giving uh, Ukraine some AMX-10 uh, light tanks. And the U.S. is going to be sending over Bradley fighting vehicles. So if you're a, a warmonger, a neocon, uh, or just so happy to be spending all this U.S. taxpayer money in Ukraine, this is going to make you real happy. You know, I don't forget about our border. We don't need to do anything about that. 
The other thing is, uh, he said Estonia is working real hard to seize Russian, Russian assets, and that, that throws me off onto a tangent. Uh, you know, one of the things that, this is terrible, you, you know we seized the Russian assets and we tried to sanction the hell out of them. Well, we've scared the bejeebies out of the world, and so everybody everywhere is buying up gold, silver, platinum, and they're trying to divest themselves from dollars. They're selling U.S. treasuries. I mean, if you wanted to do the one thing to scare the hell out of 85% of the world and make them get off of the U.S. dollar, well, you did it. Good, good for you, uh, U.S. government and uh, European Union. So I, I imagine uh, within, well, I'm probably within my lifetime, I think that the dollar is going to be gone. Uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, here's, here's one. Turkey and Syria are negotiating or working to uh, toss the Kurds and the U.S. out of uh, Syria. So we'll see how that goes. And, of course, you got the Bannon think tank uh, who's pissed off about that. And so he wants Turkey out of NATO. So we'll see what happens. And Turkey has been cozying up to Russia. And you know that they've got the, uh, the pipelines that are coming into Turkey that are supplying Europe. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, he talked about, I, this was just an offhand uh, little tidbit. Poland wants $1.3 trillion in reparations from Germany for World War II. Good luck getting that. <clears throat> so, but I guess they, they, they've been really harping on it. Uh, okay, the U.S., U.K., and uh, oh, yeah, the U.K. is a mess right now, you, if you haven't been following along. So there's a new poll out that says now the people want to go back into the European Union, which would be a tremendous mistake because the European Union is going to do nothing but steal more from the UK. And so they're going to be even worse off under the European Union. But, you know, whatever. I guess when you're desperate, you'll try anything, right? So um, uh, Italy offered a peace deal to Russia and Russia laughed at them. So that, that was a good one. Uh, all right, so the latest uh, big uh, big strikes, uh, with the uh, Donetsk, Donetsk, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, that, that missile strike from Ukraine, the HIMARS system, uh, that death toll is up to 89 now, Russia says. So um, <clears throat> so Russia, they, uh, they retaliated, uh, supposedly, um, was they hit a building next to an ice rink. Uh, that had some uh, two HIMARS systems, and uh, they said that Russia's reporting that there's 100 Ukrainians uh, dead. So, uh, so good. They killed more Ukrainians than uh, the Ukrainians killed Russians. So there you go. Let's uh, let's just destroy Ukraine. Um, so, oh yeah. So Germany's all good with seizing the Russian assets. Uh, so they're real happy about that and bragging about it. And uh, we'll see where that goes. If Russia cuts some, well, they already cut off. Uh, uh, Germany, but I, I imagine Russia is going to be holding a grudge against Germany for quite some time after this, even even with the new um, new government. Um, the lat latest was Ukraine now hit Russia again with another strike on the uh, com or the commandant's. They said it's a commandant's office, but there was a recruit recruitment center nearby, and no no death toll numbers on that yet. So uh, it's amazing how these uh, Ukrainian systems have gotten so accurate all of a sudden. Do you, do you think there's some U.S. contractors over there? Hmm? I don't know. You tell me. I, I mean, because those, those systems take a lot of training and a long time to spin up on. But the Ukrainians, man, I tell you what, they must have like, you know, one of them th devices like in Star Trek that you put on your head. And, uh, and you just absorb all the knowledge right there, and boom, five minutes later, man, you can go walk right out and operate a HIMARS system. So uh, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm happy for them. Thank God there's no U.S. troops or NATO troops or uh, contractors or any of that in Ukraine right now operating those systems on Russia. So that's it. That's the rundown for today. Uh, like I said, uh, Jason Hinkle, um, Alex, and... Uh, well, and of course, I got to watch the Duran tonight, and then that's it for me. I, by the way, I got into, uh, just on an entertainment note, <clears throat> while I was sick, I got into uh, Picard on Paramount yesterday, and I, I binge-watched the whole first season, and boy, I tell you, that tells you how sick I was. I couldn't even get off the sofa, and, uh, you know, I, I heard it was pretty woke, and it was it was a lot woker than the old 60s, you know, uh, uh, but I didn't think it was too bad. I, it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. So, you know, it's, I'm, I'm, but I'm a huge Star Trek fan. If you're, if, you're not, if you're in the middle of the road on Star Trek or just not a fan, you, you would not have liked it. Uh, it, it, it just kind of, and it did drag on in a lot of the episodes. You're just going like, man, 
give me some action here, man, to do something, you know, it's just, anyway, it was, it was pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm going to get into the second season here tonight because I'm still, <clears throat> still can't sleep because of congestion in my chest. I've been trying the NyQuil, but uh, that hasn't worked. All right. It's good, 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 good to live in the free, 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 free state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSantis. Peace out. Stay free.